and he is based at the OIE in <coughs> Paris, <coughs> okay. headquarters, and he is responsible for technical secretariat of the Scientific Commission for Animal Diseases, <coughs> and uh, which involves a, a range of activities and diseases. And he is the OIE focal point for scientific aspects of rabies control, and very much involved in the tripartite plus GARC activities at global level to eliminate rabies. The floor is yours, Gregory. Thank you, thank you, Leah. I I believe I got 20 minutes, and I always I brought my clock just to avoid the uh, trouble mistake. Um, well. Thank you for this opportunity. I think it's, uh, it's well known the, the OIE and uh, our role to collect information and data worldwide. And I very much like the, the presentation by Florence. I would probably add at the bottom of your conclusion that this data need to be shared, you say, to the, to, to the stakeholders, but also to international organizations. But why? Why we need to notify rabies? I think this is the question we need to probably ask ourselves. And sometimes this is the question asked by many countries and many people say, why, why, why I need to, to share my data with my neighbor? Why I need to share with, my, with international organization? There is sometimes consequences. Well, to put it very simple, this is my answer every time I ask. If it's not reported, if the of officially notify the disease does not exist. And one, one of the biggest problems we are facing, and are, we have already seen by, presented by our colleagues this morning, is that uh, we need political will and we need uh, resource mobilization to really implement ac actions. If, I, if you are in the shoes of the politician and nobody claims that there is a problem in your country, the politician will allocate resources to other places, will not allocate resources where what is matter. However, if you say that in your country there is a problem, that people died because rabies, there was a couple of dramatic examples provided this morning, but we could talk easily about so many examples of dramatic cases of people died because of disease that is 100% per, uh, preventable. So it's, it's, it's good to say we have a problem. Decision makers, we need to solve this problem in our country. So clearly we need to notify, and we need to notify not only to our politician, but also at the international level, because we are all in the same boat. We need to work together to eliminate this disease. Allow me to present the OIE for those who are not very familiar. So this is who we are. In fact, this is who you are, because the OIE is uh, made of 181 member countries, as you can see there, distributed in five uh, regions all around the world. Africa, Europe, Middle East, large number of countries. As mentioned in my opening remark, it, it's a all organization, if I might say, is uh, older than 90 years old. Um, the, the headquarters is in Paris. This is the building where I privileged to go every day in the morning and also to live every day in the afternoon. So it's double, double the pleasure. But and this is our mandate. Our mandate is a long list of mandates, but what is matter today is that the OI is responsible to promote transparency among the member countries. And this is where this World Animal Health Information System, WAHIS, is the tool we are using to promote transparency. Notification is not just a request. Notification is an obligation. And I realize we are not English speaker. I can see a couple of ten good English speakers here. And I put in, in bold this word of shall. It's not should. Should is more recommendation. We are recommended things to move animals from one country to another. This is what we are recommended. But when it comes to notification, it's an obligation where member countries say, we agree that we want to have this notification. And one of the chapter, I'm sorry, I'm going to keep uh, referring to terrestrial code chapters. I know it's a bit boring, but it's, it's important to know that we got a strong legal framework to work. So the first chapter, 1.1, is actually referring to disease notification. And they said clearly, veterinary authorities, ourselves, shall notify to the OIE the occurrence of, of or absence of disease. So every 
six months, <coughs> every single country of this 181 country need to notify to the UI if the disease is present or not. And that applies to, to rabies, of course. But why rabies need to be notified? Well, rabies match a listing criteria, which again are listed in chapter 1.2, where again are available on, on, on the internet. And there is a certain criteria that we assess the disease against this criteria to decide if the disease should be included in the list or not. And rabies fulfill almost every single criteria, so definitely need to be noti notified. And the third chapter I want to bring to your attention is chapter 1.3, which is a long list of disease. So there is in fact 116 disease that every country, every six months, need to notify if the disease is present or absent in the country. And of course, rabies is one of it. Allow me to emphasize that notification is actually the only obligation that we all agree against o OIE. So it's not a recommendation, it's an obligation. If we don't notify, we are not fulfilling our obligation. So who notifies to the OI? Well, the, the person that, uh, there is one person in, in each country, which is the delegate, most of the time is the chief veterinary, veterinary officer or the, usually the director general, that is actually the delegate of the OI. So this is the person responsible to push the button and share this information with the OI. This person is supported, he's many tags, uh, he has many tags with the UI, <laughs> so he's supported by focal points, and there is one focal point in your country, which is animal disease notification. And I'm bringing this information to you to make sure that if the information doesn't flow to the OI, make sure you contact your OI delegate or your focal point. If you don't know him or her, please let me know and I will be happy to share the name. Because sometimes there is not bad faith and not notification. There is just, we don't know why our country is notifying. And it was funny enough, during your, this morning presentation, I was checking the OI website to see if the data you were presenting openly at, in a transparent manner, in a very constructive and professional manner, was included in the, in the database. And I must say that some of the countries, the information you provide does not match with what we got in the database. So there is uh, something that we need to work. Again, we, during these two days, I would be happy to help you out and try to show where this information can be shared. And I will strongly encourage you to contact your delegate or your focal point to update this information, because again, that could be a very nice output of this meeting. At the UAE, this is uh, Okay, more than 90 years of experience collect collecting and, and sharing data. We started back in the, in the 1924 with telegrams. So countries make an effort to go to the telegrams, make a telegrams and send it to, to Paris. So if 90 years ago people were able to do that, now with the modern technology, there is no excuse of not doing it. Because even when I realized the, the interface is not user friendly, probably, still much simpler than sending a, a telegram. In 2005, everything become electronic. And in 2016, now we got an app where you can download in your phone, free of charge from, for both uh, iPhone and uh, another platform, where you can download the WAHIS and you can get an update, a uh, real-time update of the health situation worldwide. So in your hands, you got the information that you need to to, to, to make a, a decision. But what kind of report we got? We can divide the, the report we are sending to the UI in two different types. Early warning, where there is an incursion, where there is an alert, we got a way of doing it, or monitoring system, which is just monitoring the state of the disease. So early warning need to, done, need to be done uh, within 24 hours of the outbreak. So if your country is free of rabies and you discover that there is a rabies case, within 24 hours, you are obliged to send this information to the UI. After that, we are requesting weekly update, just to keep everybody updated on how is the situation. <coughs> of course, if the outbreak is not under control, we agree that we can probably send monthly updates. And then at some point, the country needs to take a decision. The, the decision to be made by, by the delegate is the outbreak has been solved, that's it, close the, close the notification of the report, or the disease cannot be controlled, the outbreak is not controlled, we say that the disease is becoming endemic, and then we become uh, 
the, the information will be shared in the monitoring system. Which this system will be every six months, there is a report that needs to be shared with the, with the UI and automatically with 181 members. And also annual report. At the end of the year, member countries share information not only about the disease, but also about other important aspects, such as number of veterinarians, the vaccine production uh, laboratory. So again, that will help everybody to understand the strength and the weakness of each member country's veterinary services. When it's come to rabies, again, the case definition probably will be a, a big debate. And we got international standard coming back to chapter 8.14.1, which they said they defined the case definition for rabies, which for the purpose of notification, for the purpose of the terrestrial code, a case is, an animal, is any animal infected with rabies virus, which is the former classical rabies virus. This chapter is in the process of being updated to try to support the global strategy and try to be harmonized with the WHO guidelines. And we also include a case definition for dogs mediated rabies. Because again, <coughs> if we target dogs mediated, if we eliminate rabies in dogs, mediated, in, in dogs we are clearly saving 99% of human casualties. So it will be very, very efficient. So that in the next version of the chapter, if member countries agree, there will be a, a case definition for dogs mediated rabies. The case definition need to be, the case need to be supported by a di diagnostic method, which was very clearly presented by, by, by Florence. But the, there is standard, again, you are very welcome to, to visit the website and see what are the diagnostic that they are recommended by DOI. So a little question to you, based on what I said, case definition, let's see a real case. You got a, a bat, that you send to the lab and they identify Lisa virus type one. Does it need to be reported to the, to the UI? Raise your hands who thinks they should be reported. One, two, okay. Well, if we go back to the case definition, they said that the rabies case is a classical rabies virus. I'm not a virologist, but Lisa virus type one is not a classical rabies virus, isn't it? So it should not be reported. It's not, we are not in obligation to report. You can report to share information, but this is not part of the case definition. If we go to question two, again, the same virus, but this time in dogs. Need to be notified to the UI? Yes or no? Well, if we go back to the case definition, we said any animal infected, so dogs clearly is a animal infected, so it's a host recognized by the OAE as a, as a host for rabies. However, the virus, again, the agents is not classical rabies virus, so it should not be reported, doesn't need to be reported to the OAE. So it's a rabies virus in animals, okay? So there is a way to share this information because this information is important, but you need to think about why it's like this. It's because we are focusing the public health impact of rabies. We are not gathering data just for the sake of gathering data, and we are not gathering data for informing research. We are gathering data to help countries to risk, to manage the risk. So that is the reason why this is the case definition. In the next couple of minutes, I, I no, it's seven minutes, I think I got, huh? It's 20 minutes, so I got, I'm, I'm okay. So a couple of examples of uh, countries report. Um, I used just by chance this uh, case from, from Hungary. There is no any confidentiality here. This is just downloaded yesterday from the website. So this is something that you can look at, at your country and also your neighbor or your trade partners or whoever you are interested. So this is a immediate notification. So Hungary was free of rabies. And back in, in 2017, they identified an incursion of rabies virus. So the gentleman here, Dr. Lagos Bognar, which is the delegate, include this, uh, entry this, uh, this information in the database, in Wahi's database. And you can see here that there is a, the, the agent is rabies virus, as we said, the serotype is the classical, the former classical rabies virus. And they said that they did clinical laboratory and basic and advanced technique for the diagnostic. 
more of the information that you can find in, in, in immediate notification is actually the, the place where the disease happens. I was, Cindy explained how to work with it, and clearly I did not, uh, here we are. So you, you got a, uh, the geographical location, the date, the status of the outbreak, so it was solved in, in, in March, in the third, susceptible species, case, death, all these things are the data shared uh, by, by Hungary. The measure they apply, which is this one, diagnostic they were using, so it's basically what Florence explained to us, and also a little map, which I agree is not the best looking map, but at least we know exactly where the, the outbreaks happens. So I think with this information is enough to understand, uh, to assess the risk and to make a decision for animal movement. This is not information which is sufficient to inform the program manager of the of Hungary rabies control, but it's information to inform your, your neighbor. When it's come to the six monthly report, again, you go to the OI website, you go to, to, to this... Uh, country information, this is the WAHIS interface, country information, you set the country you want, and I use again by chance, well, that was not by chance, but it was Malaysia, which it was free and then got an incursion. And you got here all the history of reporting. So Malaysia was reporting nicely, 2016, they did not submit the annual report in 2017, in 2016, but they share the first semester and second semester of 2017. All these data are validated and reviewed by my colleagues. There is a full department in the OI getting this data and actually validating the data. If any question, they go back to the country for clarification. So when the six monthly report, again, there is a, there is a summary of this situation. There is a, a information of the total of new uh, or active uh, cases of outbreaks, what species were, were affected, the, where the disease happens, number of animals that they were susceptible, case that were killed or death, number of animals that they were vaccinated as a response to the outbreak, and also what kind of measure of control this country implement to control the disease, in this case, rabies, which in, again includes uh, systematic vaccination. Finally, at the end of the year, and this is the third report we need to receive every, every year from, from each member country, which is the annual report. Uh, I use an example this time of Kenya, which uh, the top of the, the information related to animals, we also gather information related to humans. So zoonotic disease in humans, we are actually collecting the number of cases in, in humans. It means the delegate need to get in contact with the Ministry of Health to get this information in order to submit a great data to the OI. So in the top of that, you got information about the veterinary services capabilities, <laughs> vaccine production, national labs, animal population, and human cases. So Kenya, uh, in 2015, they declared that there was not rabies cases. There was actually rabies cases, but not with a great data. There was not quantitative data. They were just qualitative data. I know that my sounds a little bit complicated, and I know there is a lot of codes and, and information that needs to be informed or in order to maintain a good level of notification. The OI runs uh, focal point training. So in the majority of your countries, the, your colleagues have been trained by our people on how to best report data. So there is uh, ongoing training. My colleagues are always welcome to, re to resolve questions. Also, we got this procedure, which again, they are available on, on, in the website, where you have more information about how the disease needs to be notified for, or <coughs> what is the code to be used if you want to, to declare that you are doing a target surveillance rather than a scanning surveillance. I let you I leave you here the, the, the email address from the department responsible for the WAHIS in case you need it, but you are very welcome to also contact me. And this is the good news that I always very excited to bring when I talk about notification. Because WAHIS, which we all know is not probably the most modern uh, database or platform, is becoming WAHIS, uh, WAHIS Plus. It's a, a big investment by, by the OIE as request of member countries, 
So by 2020, we will have a completely brand new database, which could be a nice and user-friendly platform, which will be possibility to extract data for you to use it. Because now I realize it's not always straightforward to get this data, raw data for your own analysis or for your own risk assessment. So that's hopefully will be solved. Uh, we are actually aiming at uh, connecting with other database. There is in some countries, there are regional database that probably would be so easy to connect to avoid the fatigue of reporting to too many different uh, database. So that could be also be solved. And what we are aiming also is to link this uh, purely epidemiology data with other data that might be interesting, such as climate change and, and human. And my conclusion before my time is over, again, if we don't report, the disease does not exist. If you want support and you want to increase your political will or you want to increase the interest of your decision makers, make sure that this is, is notified. I notice we are all technical level, but we can influence the person need to notify. And, and hiding the disease is definitely not the right way to do it. And of course, this is key to maintain the level of transparency that clearly this is what we have done this morning. And with that, I thank you for your attention. <coughs>